Okay. In this chapter, CIS 1103, this is chapter four. Why do we need protocol? We are going to discuss the network protocol. In the previous lecture, we got an, we received an introduction in network. Now we are going to learn about protocols. Okay. Okay, I'm just waiting for this to come on the screen. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Now the screen will come here on the blackboard. Hopefully. Or you can follow from your laptop, please. If this is not working. Okay. We will learn about protocol. What is what is needed for a protocol? Any protocol should have a source or sender who will send the message, a destination or the receiver, and the transmission media, and an agreed method of communication. Agreed method of communication is what we call is the protocol. No, when so, you, you need to talk to someone, you need to know his his teacher, his student. There is a protocol to talk to each person, right? So why is it important to learn about networking protocols? We need to learn the message format. So it must use a specific format or structure. Message size, how much is the size of the message? The timing, the speed, what encoding, is it encrypted or not? Is it encoded? Encapsulation, message pattern. The internet uses standards, okay? And uh, the good thing about standards, it ensures that all devices connecting to the network imp implement the same set of rules. And if you buy, an, if you want to access the internet from your smartphone or the tablet or the computer, you are following the same protocol, the same standards that's why it's good to have a standard okay for example the way in which an email is formatted forwarded is following the standard you send an email from your laptop the receiver can receive the email from his smartphone or her smartphone okay because they are following standard CLO2, week six. Uh, PowerPoint five now. Five. Okay. So an internet standard is the end result of a comprehensive cycle of discussion, problem solving, and this thing. Okay. And when a standard is set, it should be discussed and approved by some international bodies, okay? And following a number of requests for comments called RFC, okay? RFC for Internet Standards, standards are published and managed by the Internet Engineering Task Force, IETF, okay? Other standards organization are IEEE, IANA, IETF, 
ITU, ITU meaning International Telecommunication Union, and TIA, ICANN also. Okay, the Internet Protocol Stack. It's responsible for successful communication between hosts. Okay. And these protocols are implemented in software and in hardware. And we call it protocol stack. A stack illustrates the protocols as a layered hierarchy. For simplicity, we show it like a layer hierarchy. So if you look here, we have a stack, HTTP, TCP, IP, and Ethernet. And the separation of functions enables each layer in the stack to operate independently of others. Yeah, and for example, let's say you are browsing a website on your laptop or computer. Okay, so the first layer you are using the HTTP. Then the message is transferred to the TCP transport control protocol. Okay, and the TCP is respons responsible for guaranteeing reliable delivery of the information and it manages the flow control between end devices. After the TCP, it goes to the IP, which is Internet Protocol, level IP. This is responsible for delivering message from the sender to the receiver, and yani routing. Okay. And it is used by router. Ethernet at the end is the protocol is responsible for the delivery of message from one network card, one interface card, network interface to another but in the same area network. But why it is better to have these layers? Because it's easier for you to learn about the network standard if it is given layers. It's easy to study like that. Okay? So, and also it assists in protocol design for competition between developers and industries and enables in, in, industry changes without affecting other levels and provides a common language to describe networking functions and capabilities. Yannick, now your computer, you can buy a network card, network interface card from one manufacturer or from another. It will still work on your computer because they are following the same standard. Okay. Now let's talk about the TCP IP model. The TCP IP model has four layers. These are the layers. Please look at them. You need to know the function of each layer. The first one is application, which is HTTP. Some example, for example, transport layer, we have TCP and we have UDP. Internet, we have the internet protocol IP. Network access, it controls the hardware devices and media that make up the network. For example, Ethernet. Okay. The OSI model is not four layers, it's actually seven layers. Okay, the application here is represented in three layers, session, presentation, and application. Look here, number seven, six, and five. Look at them, please. Which layer is responsible for representation of the data? Layer number six presentation. Which layer is responsible for organize the dialogue and message data in number five? Which layer is protocol used for process-to-process -process communication? Seven. Okay, so you need to know the function of each layer. And these are the names, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data, and physical. You need to know them in order. Yeah, one way to learn them is, you know, remember the first uh, initiate, initial, then you put a word or something. Okay. So here the, we have the layers and that example of com network components like email. So IP addressing is in which layer? 
layer three network. Okay. One is in which layer? The one. Layer two data link. Okay. And so on. Firewall filtering is in transport layer. Your ports. So here is a good comparison between TCP IP. I am now in slide number 12. This is a good comparison between OSI model and TCP IP model. Okay. Now go to slide number 13, please. This is the encapsulation. Please look at the PowerPoint. If you don't have it, you come and look here on my screen or on your screen. Okay. This is important. Each layer adds its own data and addresses in uh, its transmission to the corresponding layer. And we call this encapsulation. Like when you send a letter, you write your letter. You, you uh, fold the paper and then you put it in envelope. And in the envelope, you will write sender and receiver. So this is called encapsulation. And it taghleef. In Arabic, taghleef. Okay. And when it arrives at the destination, it will be de-encapsulation. Yani, encapsulation. To remove encapsulation. The encapsulation... From layer seven, six, five, it is called data. So if we go back here, if you look at page, uh, sorry, slide number 13, seven, six, and five, the encapsulation is called data or payload. Like email. Then in the transport layer, it is called segment. You have to know this, please. Or data graph. In the network layer, it is called packet. In the data link layer, it is called frame. In the data link layer, it's called frame. Then it goes to the wire. In the wire, it will be what? Bits. Electric signal, electromagnetic signal. This is in the physics. Okay. So the applic now we are in slide 15. This is the function of each layer. Please have a look at it. Of the OSI. Please read them. Layer 7 application. Who can tell me the function of layer 7? Interface between two applications or separate device. Presentation, reformatting, compression. Okay. You know some files, MBIG or JBG. So this or this, we call it formats. Then we have the session layer. How data between applications is synced and recovered. And the data is called payload. Then we have transport layer. Here we have two slide number 16, please. In transport layer, we have two important protocols. TCP, lower transport control protocol. This is connection oriented. It is reliable. It will give you uh, acknowledgement if the message is received. And you send something in TCP, you will know it is received or not. Zayl Barid al Musajjal, if you know, registered mail. I feel like if you use some high, maybe DHL or something like that, Aramex. All right. Now, this is TCP. UDP, on the other hand, there is no guarantee, but it is fast. Okay. And there is no flow control. And transport layer, it will add uh, some information to the message. 
uh, on the trailer side okay يعني بتضيف معلومات على المسج اوكي okay. على الهيدر the transport layer will add some addresses on the header like i told you in the envelope you write something on the envelope in front and back side if the message is too light too, too large tcp will divide it into small parts called segments if you are using udb it is called datagram very good any questions طيب layer 3 اللي هي it اللي هي internet layer here we are talking about routing okay and the name of the encapsulation there is called packet okay and the network layer will add also some address to the some information to the header if necessary the network layer will divide the large packets into smaller packets we call this fragmentation fragmentation تجزي. any questions any questions طيب layer 2 اللي هي data link layer it is responsible for interfacing with the physical hardware okay and the encapsulation is called frame okay and the data link layer will add information to the header and trailer not only header header and trailer look at uh, slide number 18 في عنا كمان is something called MAC. MAC is Media Access Control Address is the physical address of your computer. Okay, it is embedded on the network adapter in your car. Each computer has network card. The network card has MAC address or physical address. Okay. Last but not least is layer one, the physical layer. It is responsible for sending bits, either through the wire or wireless. And these bits can be wavelength in the air, voltage, or light, if you are using fiber optic cable. So this is the summary, very, very important slide, number 20. Here we have the browser. You are layer seven, go down seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then go through the cable. When it arrives, it will go from one to seven again. Okay. Now I will stop here.